A popular quantum paradox, the observer effect, notes that by the mere act of observing an experiment, we affect the outcome. A similar conundrum exists in the world of nanomechanics. Now you can't measure a nanomechanical system without influencing it. But now scientists are engineering their influence on the system to enhance the way they measure. So take that nanomechanics. This is the Qubit Lab. Scientists from a project called QNEMS are studying the manipulation of nanomechanics on the quantum scale. Now, what are nanomechanisms? If you remember our episode on optomechanics, <laughs> which you should, you've already heard of them. Nanomechanics are just that. They're really tiny vibrating devices. Optomechanisms are just a specific type of these oscillators that use light to detect their motion. Other types of nanomechanisms use electrons and have higher frequencies. The higher frequencies are due to the fact that they are smaller and made of a different stiffer material. Whereas before we were looking at semiconductor cantilevers, these devices are made of carbon nanotubes. Because these tubes are so small, their motion cannot be read out with mirrors, as is the case for optomechanisms. Instead, the QNIM scientists use two different schemes. The first readout scheme is very simple. They just apply voltage and measure the electric current. They do this by putting up barriers on each end, which makes the electron span a longer time inside the tube. Then they add the electrode underneath. The closer the tube is to the gate, the more it is charged. Current relies on the charge, so by measuring the current, the resonance of the tube can be read. A second scheme for reading resonance is more sophisticated, but it provides more information and is better suited to quantum measurements. It's based on wait, wait. a... Can I say this part? This scheme is based on using a squid. Yep, a squid. Not a squid, Larry. Squid. Superconductive quantum interference device. It's a tiny loop made of a superconductor that operates at low temperatures. Squid is used for precise measurements of magnetic fields. QNEM's researchers have fabricated a squid which is suspended in a vacuum. If the nanotube moves, the magnetic flux through the loop is modified and the voltage generated at the squid measures this motion. All of these structures have been fabricated and are ready for the really exciting part, measuring the mechanical motion. Now at this stage, one of the main difficulties is something called back action, which is actually the effect that the detector is having on the system. Back action is on the one hand a bad thing, since it prevents us from getting a complete reading of all the data in the system. For example, measuring the same system twice in a row will very likely yield different results. But on the other hand, back action can be useful. Scientists can engineer its influence on what's being measured. For example, with the QNIM squid... <laughs> Larry. Sorry. With the QNIM squid, the detector shifts the frequency of the mechanical resonator and also affects the friction that the resonator feels. This friction-like effect is generated by the interaction of the squid with the electrons. Sometimes the back action reduces friction and can even destroy it entirely. Then the resonator dissipates no energy and can self-oscillate, moving without being actuated. QNIM scientists have observed self-oscillations in both squids and in optical cavities. The QNEMS project still has over a year to go, and what lies ahead is the most difficult part to observe how mechanical resonators behave with quantum particles and manipulate their quantum states. If they succeed, mechanical elements may be used in quantum computing and for ultra-sensitive detection. Computers of the future may be based on mechanical elements and be ultra-compact. And to think, all of that can be accomplished with one of these guys. Yes, Larry. Science is amazing. I'm Larissa. And I'm Larry, and we'll see you next time. Whew, man, that was a tough episode, eh, Squiddy? <laughs> so I wanted to see if the observer effect would work on Larry. 
if our observing him would affect his behavior. <laughs> no, 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 I hear you, Squiddy. Man, give me some tentacle. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's like that all the time. <laughs>